When navigating doctor's appointments, I feel like it's important to become independent. In the beginning, I feel like it's important to jot down notes, what you're feeling right before the appointment or in between appointments. I believe it's important to become independent as soon as you possibly can. Because at that point, when you're ready to move away from home, it's important that you're able to completely handle your care. This means being able to arrange doctor's appointments, being able to reorder your medications, being able to remember to take your medications. All of these things are really important before you move away from home. Some good tips I have for remembering to take medications is just having a phone app, and there's a lot of really great apps that'll help you track your medications. Next, I believe keeping a calendar of all of your appointments are super important. Finally, you should program all the numbers from your pharmacies, for your physicians, all onto your phone, because it's the first step in you becoming more independent. You should take a more active role when it comes to your doctor's appointments. This may include asking your physician questions just about what's going on or about your medications, but it's important to know that these appointments are for you and your health. It is important that you have an extra set of ears at all of your appointments. This person may be able to add to your appointments and help you go over what happened in the appointment afterwards. This person has been really useful for me in my appointments as they are able to say what I was afraid to say, what I forgot to say, and many other things. Leaving a pediatric team and going to an adult team can be a very difficult transition. However, it is important to know that this adult team is better equipped to handle adult problems. It may also be useful to use this time as a second opinion because this physician is a new set of eyes over your medical record. I believe that school and work are great ways to maintain the feelings of a normal life. I really recommend going to the disability office and seeing what accommodations you may be eligible for. For me, this has included priority enrollment, extra time on exams, a disability tram to pick me up and drop me off near my classes, and many more things. I feel like it's important that you talk to your professors about your diagnosis. My go-to line is, I'd rather tell you this now than beg for forgiveness later. This helps my professor better understand why I may look normal, however, some days I may have a bad pH day and have to take it a little bit more easy. Sometimes it's necessary to talk to your employers because you may need accommodations. In my experience, all of my employers have been really supportive and have given me everything I needed to be successful in the job. Working full time in a high energy job may not be feasible for everyone. It is important to listen to your body and learn your limits. A diagnosis of pH can be difficult for both the individual and the family. There should not be a stigma around seeking mental health. It is completely normal to have these feelings and be overwhelmed by the entire situation. It is important that you take time for yourself, as too much work can have ill effects on your body. A self-care plan is extremely important. In nursing school, we talk a lot about these self-care plans, and it's really making sure that you have time for yourself, away from both school and work. My self-care plan in the past has involved horseback riding and going to Disneyland. It's really important that I just have time to get away and just completely forget about school, work, and my diagnosis.